It's sunny most mornings in Kairatpur, but you can hardly tell, at least not until some time after everyone's had breakfast. That's because here and in millions of villages in the developing world, food is cooked with wood or cow dung. The soot or black carbon from incomplete combustion causes not only lung disease but global warming, says climatologist V. Ramanathan, who's with the Scripps Institution at the University of California, San Diego. And this is being done by over three billion people in the world, not because they want to destroy the environment, they have no access to other types of fuels. He says reducing black carbon will immediately slow global warming. Cleaning up diesel engines is one way to do this, but Ramanathan is focused on cleaner cooking. He's doing an experiment. With UN and private grants, his Surya project is handing out cleaner burning stoves to 15,000 households in and around Kairatpur. They use biofuels but have a solar charged internal fan to burn more efficiently. So that me instrument measures black carbon. Over the next two years, the team will measure what the cleaner stoves do for air quality, hoping to make a strong case for scaling up this idea. The preliminary data shows if we replace the current way of cooking, we should see a dramatic impact. First on the health, second on the air quality, and hopefully on regional climate. Ramanathan's call to reduce black carbon is supported in a recent U.S. government report. Some advocates wanted this issue on the agenda of the Copenhagen Climate Summit. But there are skeptics. Rajendra Pachauri, chair of the Nobel Prize winning Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, says we don't yet know enough about black carbon. And he says there's no quick climate dividend. Getting billions of people to abruptly change the way they cook just isn't practical. If one uses that argument, I would say that <clears throat> running faster trains in North America and providing public transport in a city like Houston is so much more a logical solution than people driving gas guzzling cars and SUVs. So you know these things are not decided by merely back of the envelope calculations. If you ask people to give up driving their cars, you have to change mindsets, you've got to change values. Despite his skepticism on the climate question, Pachori's Delhi-based Energy and Research Institute has partnered with Ramanathan since he has no argument on the health issue. Some 1.5 million people in India alone die each year from inhaling indoor air filled with pollutants you rarely find in the developed world, says epidemiologist Kalpana Balakrishnan. She's at Sri Ramachandra University in Chennai. Just to give you a comparison value, many indoor settings in developed countries that do not have this particular source of particulates are in the range of 25 to 50 micrograms, no more than that. In a typical unimproved rural household, you could be as uh, high as an order of magnitude more, 400 to 500 micrograms per meter cube, 24 hours. So to adjust the flame, you turn this button here. It's one thing to give away a few thousand stoves, but how to get them into another 120 million households in a vast, diverse nation? A freebie, especially one using unfamiliar or finicky technology, will quickly begin to gather dust. What's needed are commercial enterprises, a so-called market value chain, says Hafiz Ur Rahman, who's one of the scientists on the Surya project. The commercial players will have to invest substantially in building that rural value chain, market value chain, which would be so essential not only for delivery of the technology, but also for its maintenance, upkeep, spares, all the other things that go with it. A non-profit group called Envirofit, backed by the Shell Oil Company's foundation, thinks it has a market-based plan that could be a model. In a handful of rural markets, it has persuaded retailers to carry Envirofit stoves, which they can sell and service for a profit. The next challenge, getting customers to buy, marketing. If you look at rural India, what message reaches to the consumer there in the rural? I mean, the newspapers do not reach. Televisions would be, there would be a penetration of television, but it would be remarkably low. So when you want to do a communication of the benefits of the stoves or awareness of the indoor air pollution, 
it has to be a video on wheels or van on wheels which goes from uh, village to village demonstrating the stove. Envirofit holds demonstrations of its stove models, a patented design made at its Colorado headquarters that sells for around 25 US dollars. They also provide entertainment with games, with songs and drama. The not-so-subtle message is about clean indoor air, says Envirofit's Harish Anchin. The man of the family buys a television and he buys a bike and then he buys a mobile phone. And uh, you have the lady who keeps on saying that you are going into the modern age, you are getting uh, all these particular gadgets, but look at the kitchen, which is the main heart of the entire household. And we're still having the same traditional cook stoves and uh, that gives out fumes and is less uh, efficient. All this generates consumer interest. Does it leave charcoal? No, all the wood is burned to ashes. All the energy is absorbed. The nearest dealer is written here on the side. These women seemed sold as they took their brochures home. One thing they would like is financing. If that's available, we'd buy them right away. Envirofit is working to get microloans to make the purchases easier. The goal is a million stove sales by 2011. See, basically what we want to be making sure... Epidemiologist Balakrishnan, who's studying indoor air and stove design, says none of the current models achieve emission standards that the World Health Organization calls healthy. But even though they're not the cleanest, they are cleaner, she says. And most importantly, they've sensitized people to pollution that many rural Indians used to accept as a fact of life. Many people, if you go to the rural areas, appreciate the fact that they have a less smoky stove. I think the best should not be the enemy of the good. Definitive study results on the effects of black carbon are expected in two years, and climatologist Ramanathan says they'll determine whether cleaner cook stoves can not only help lower people's exposure to toxic soot, but also help slow global warming.